All right, YouTube, this is gonna be a um, 20,000 mile update video on my 2015 uh, Chevy Silverado 1500. Uh, this is the one that, this is the model that doesn't have the uh, LED standard. Um, it's got the, the four halogen lights. Uh, if you've seen the review of my first video, you, you would uh, you would know, but for those that have not, this is just gonna be a, a, a 20,000 mile update, like I said. I'm gonna go over some things that I like, some things that I don't, uh, and then just my opinion on if I would recommend this as a um, newer used vehicle to you. Obviously, you're probably gonna get it used now. But uh, starting off, uh, I love the color that I got. I got a, a gray color, I think. I think trucks look really nice in gray. Um, I like how neat the interior is. I like the, the colors, the instrument cluster. I love all of that. The radio is real nice. Uh, this is the all-star package, so I got the heated um, seats and stuff like that, dual climate control. Just a, a really well put together truck, I feel. The uh, the materials are nice, you know, it's, there's not a lot of uh, cracking as you're driving down the highway where plastic's rubbing on plastic and stuff like that. Um, yeah, overall, you know, good, good well-built Chevy. Uh, that being said, there are some things for this particular model that I'm not really a fan of. Uh, I'm going to go over a good amount of them. It's going to make it seem like it's not not a good vehicle, you know, to some. But overall, I think it's a it's a pretty nice vehicle. Uh, so the, the first thing I'm going to go over is the cruise control problem that I have. So over here is cruise control. As you can see, cruise control's on, cruise control's off. That, that turns it on and off, that cancels it, this sets it. So you're going 75 miles an hour on the freeway and you wanna hit cruise control and you're going 75. Let's say after you after you after it reads that you're going 75, you wanna go down to 70 really quickly. So you'll hit, you'll hit one, two, three, four, five and go down to 70. Well, what'll happen up here is it'll go 75, 74, then 75, then 74, then 75, and then down. It'll glitch, and it'll go up and down, up and down, up and down, and then finally it'll go down. Uh, I'm, I don't like that at all. Uh, I, I think that's really um, annoying to see, especially when you're trying to get down in a hurry, like let's say uh, you're coming up to a speed trap or something like that, and you're going a little faster than maybe you should be. Uh, and when you hit the tail lights, Obviously, they're gonna they're gonna illuminate, and the police or whoever are gonna know that you're slowing down. Uh, so if you just sit, set 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 and go down, naturally your car will slow down. Uh, I don't like that it it kind of glitches and lags a little bit. Another thing too, with the steering wheel is the volume rocker on this side, which is in the back. As you can see, I'm going up and down, and then the preset selection. As you can see, I'm going up and down. Uh, my problem is more with the pre preset selector than the volume. Uh, sometimes it's the volume, but the majority of the time it's the um, up and down selector. What'll happen is I'll hit it now, and then it pulls it up. So th there's a little bit of a delay, uh, you know, maybe a second or two. That's not that big of a deal, but when I hit it, sometimes it doesn't even register. Like I'll hit it now doesn't register now it registers and it's lagging um, that really makes me mad because the whole reason they have this is to keep your hands on the wheel um, when in reality it's actually quicker to just go over here and hit a preset it just happens almost instantaneously uh, I'm not a I'm not a big fan of of this system that they have on here um, another problem that I have is with the oil life monitor on this vehicle uh, in my opinion, I feel like they they have a pre-selected 5,000 miles. Every 5,000 miles, um, you need to change your oil. Uh, I'm running fully synthetic oil in this vehicle. Uh, you know, some people, depending on the oil, say 10,000. Some people say 7,500. Uh, I've always done 7,500 with fully synthetic. Uh, in every single vehicle I have and it hasn't I haven't you know had a problem yet or haven't been yelled at by anybody the oil comes out um, you know like used oil but it's nothing you know to raise alarm over and 
with this vehicle, I feel like it's pretty much set for the, the percentage is 5,000 miles, 5,000 miles, 5,000 miles. Um, and that's just, that's just kind of annoying because then, you know, you get keeping the notifications, change oil, change oil, all that crap. And I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, if you're, if you do buy this vehicle and you do get an oil bypass filter and you are running fully synthetic, you can easily go 10 to 15,000 and your oil will come out looking, you know, really close to, to, to good, good quality oil. Um, but you know, that's something that you'll have to invest in. So I wish this system wasn't just based on a, a 5,000 mile interval. Uh, that, that's really annoying to see. But like I said, overall, clusters are awesome. I love, love the look of this. I think it's really nice. Uh, not a big fan of the position of the four wheel selector on this vehicle, especially because it's the same size and it's pretty much right on top of your um, light control. As you can see, uh, I, I had a 2008 Silverado and it was located somewhere over here in this region. It was a, a big knob, I believe. Uh, I, liked, I liked it over there and I liked my lights over here. Um, that being said, uh, I live in Michigan. Winter's coming up. I will be keeping my vehicle in two wheel until I need it. Uh, I do not recommend auto. Uh, I talked to a guy at the dealership and said, the people that keep their vehicle in auto tend to have problems with their four wheel drive. Um, I'm gonna try to do the best I can to explain this, but what happens is when you hit auto, your, your let's just say gear is constantly, constantly going. And then when it detects slippage, the link comes over and grasps onto that gear and spins with it. So if it detects slippage and you're, you know, it's the gear is spinning really quickly, what's going to happen is it's going to shoot over and lock and it's going to start grinding away at those gears. So he said, just keep it in two wheel unless you need four wheel. Uh, then in that case, switch to four wheel. And then when you don't need it anymore, go back to two. Uh, so I, I really don't want to have to get charged or possibly replace um, anything of that nature. So I just keep it in two wheel. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below if, if you agree with that or not, or that that gentleman at the dealership was just full of crap. Um, getting up over into the engine area, it is very clean. I do like uh, I do like that Ecotec, the V8 uh, 5.3. However, if you're gonna buy this vehicle, I would recommend getting a cold air intake just because it's so inefficient, the, the current intake they have on this vehicle from the factory with all the air baffles and air dams and stuff in there. Um, you, you know, they do it because it's cheap and they need to you know do EPA stuff like that. Uh, but I would definitely recommend um, upping and spending a little bit more money for a cold air intake. Uh, my old Silverado had an air, cold air intake that increased the horsepower by about 17, uh, 17 horsepower. I don't know what it is with, with these new V8s, uh, but almost every single model of cold air intake from Flowmaster, or not Flowmaster, from K&N, only adds about 10 horsepower. Uh, so, I mean, if you like the, I had the, the I think it was the, the Black Hawk or something on my old one. I like that it was all blacked out. It kind of matched, you know, what I had going on in the engine at the time. So that's what I went with. Uh, if you like the stainless one, you can get that. But all of them are going to roughly add about 10 horsepower to your vehicle. Um, I don't like the way you have to change the lights on this truck. Uh, I had HIDs in my old truck that had the same bulbs as my current truck. Uh, I tried to put the HIDs in this truck give it a you know nice clean cool look to it and uh each light on each side except the turn signals have pods little pods that you like unscrew a little bit and take out that have a gasket on it to seal it from the elements um depending on what hid kit you get the one that i had did not allow the ballast to stay in the light housing with the with the pot with the gasket closed so I had to keep it open and what would happen is moisture would get in there. So unlike the older what, 2007 to 2013 or 14 Silverados where you know the, the gasket was on the actual bulb, uh, what this does is um, it creates that waterproof seal 
with that little gasket pod that you have to, to crank off. Um, and a lot of times with HIDs, what'll happen is you'll get power to one side, but you won't get power to another. So you have to run a relay kit from your battery directly to the lights. And the pod system completely eliminates that as a possibility. Uh, you could drill through your pod, a uh, little, your little gasket pod, uh, but that would create the seal to fail because then moisture can get into the lights. Also too, changing the passenger side, I believe, or maybe it's driver, one of, obviously one of the two. One of the sides, um, you have to actually remove part of the air intake to get to uh, because of where it's located. Um, I like I like the engine. Like I said earlier, it looks real nice and clean. Um, obviously functions properly. I don't like the way, the design where you have to, um, you know, remove part of your air intake just to access, to change the headlight. Uh, all the Silverado 1500s, to my knowledge, uh, come with two battery trays. Uh, I wish they would have just routed it to um, one of the other battery trays. That would have been a lot more convenient of a place to put um, the air intake. But then again, they, they needed it to be up against a fender to get air in un, from underneath the fender. Um, so that being said, that is very annoying. If you if you want to get any aftermarket lights, I would just recommend um, an LED with a very tiny ballast or heat heat uh, heat shield, so that way it can close with the gasket on. Or you can just go the other route and completely just get a whole new set of headlights. Uh, you're gonna get aftermarket headlights, and that'll change everything up completely. But overall, uh, this is a pretty decent truck. Uh, I'm getting about, I think 14, 14 miles in the city. I do, I do to and from work. I'm on the freeway for one mile. I think I'm, I'm literally, I get on the freeway and then the next exit I get off. Other than that, it's all stop and go city driving. Uh, the best mileage I've ever gotten in this vehicle was about 27. I think it was 26, uh, really level flat land. And I was going in the truck lane. I was going 65 in the tr in the um, slow lane. So, yeah, 26, 27 miles to gallon is the best I got in here. Uh, I get about, oh, shoot, the way I fill up, I think I get about 400 and something miles till empty. Uh, something I like about the Chevys is that you can uh, overfill it a little bit. Uh, once it clicks, you can you can fill it up and you know you can fill it up, put maybe a couple more bucks in there. Uh, the Fords have a mechanism where when you try to top it off, it, it'll shoot out the bottom, so you're, you're wasting money. I don't like that at all. I like having my my needle on full for as long as I can. So I'll, I'll maybe put a couple couple bucks extra, two or three bucks extra um, in there, which is you know just about a gallon or so. But there's that. And uh, as you saw, the automatic dim lights just just turned on um even though it's still very light out i don't i don't i don't know why you know it feels like it has a mind of its own sometimes but uh, enough with the negatives i guess i i do like this truck a lot it's a very nice quality truck the the material the leather wrapped wheel um you're not getting uh plastic on plastic scratching going down the road uh, i know in my old 2000s 2008 Silverado this thing right here uh, would always crackle because the clips would always rub going down the freeway doesn't on this um, very nice material plastic very smooth um, it it heats up very quickly which I like I live in a northern climate uh, and the defrost and the way you know the vents are it, it warms up very nicely I like the heated he did see if that's a cool feature. Uh, the dual climate is awesome. And the girlfriend's in the truck. She, she, you know, she's always cold. I'm a little warmer, so she can figure that out. Um, I don't. I still. I have obviously this little, you know, cubby right, right here. But I put my CB right there. Mm, I, I miss in in my old Silverado, um, in this compartment right here. 
Uh, I had a cigarette lighter or a, um, you know, so I could charge my phone. In this vehicle, there is not one in the bottom of this, unfortunately. Uh, it's it's in the back of of this uh, jump seat right here. So, but overall, you know, really nice truck. I think it was like forty two grand or something like that. Um, middle of the road. I I'd recommend it. Uh, just because you know the forty two grand and you do get a, a lot of features. You do get a V eight. You do get dual climate. Um, heating and cooling you get dual uh, heated seats uh, miles per gallon is pretty good in this truck power uh, I'd say is about average uh, there is a little bit of a lag a little bit more of a lag than I would like um, when I put my foot on the on the, on the pedal uh, LED lighting interior is standard that's real nice then you got these guys Real, so it does get real nice and bright in here. Uh, I love the Bluetooth features. And a lot of the trucks nowadays have it. A lot of the vehicles in general have it. Speaker for that is right there above the driver. Um, but yeah, overall, pretty nice truck. Uh, I've had a, what is it, Chevy calls it, double cab now. It's the one with the, the half door in the back. Um, I've had that on both my trucks so far. I think the next truck I'm gonna I'm gonna opt for a uh, a crew cab or whatever the full four door um, one is called. Uh, I do like having more room in the back just to throw stuff. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Once again, this is the 2015 Chevy Silverado uh, 20,000 mile update video.